now uh, get so honored and the gentlemen as we wait for the guest of honor to make his presentation to us we want to say that uh, Kibana University is now a qualified university after having received the charter on the 14th December 2015. All of us are part of this university. Having begun up as a very humble institution, as a constitutional college of Masina Blue University of Science and Technology, we have made great strides under the then principal, Professor Ipara, who is now a vice chancellor. Our university consists of four faculties, two are schools and two are faculties, but all of them operate at the level of, of faculties. We have the Faculty of Education and Social Sciences. We have the Faculty of Science, School of Computing and Informatics, and we have the School of Business and Economics. We are well grounded in various courses, and we want to encourage, I'm happy to see our prospective students here. We want to say we are well grounded in matters of the programs that we run, right from certificate level to diploma level, degree, masters, and PhD. We have the main campus, which is based here at the Kibabe. But in addition to that, we also have learning centers. We have the Mugoma Town Learning Center, which is located on Nathani uh, building. We also have our town learning center at the set of town, Sesla building. With equal measure, we are, we have also found pitched tent out of this province, we are in Lodwa, where we have a learning, we are hosting a learning center. In Lodwa, we have well over 200 students who are undertaking programs and courses at various levels. So for Kibabi University, the good thing is that you can begin your studies at certificate level, advance to diploma level, where if you score a distinction or credit, then you get entitled to commence degree work at second year. From diploma, you can do your degree, which is an undergraduate. Now, from the undergraduate uh, uh, degree, then you can proceed on to do your master's. But you need to do, if you get a first class to, to, to do it, master's, you need to score a first class degree, a second class degree, upper second, those two would entitle you to go straight away into the master's or master's degree. If you get a lower second, then we shall require you to at least work for two years, get experience for two years, before then we can be admitted you for a master's degree. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our first batch of graduates cleared last year, passed by our students, graduated last year at the Masini Bruno University of Science and Technology. And the degrees, as we are talking a lot already, once they come and do the clearance, we can pick the degree certificates. We are also pleased to announce that our first master's students, students of Kobe University, graduated last year. Now this year, we have a bigger population, we have a bigger number, and we look forward with the great efforts that we are being given according to us by amendment and the Vice Chancellor of the Ipara, we are making strides to see to it that we shall have the number of master students and PhD students will continue to increase. As we stand here today, the population of this university is well above 6,000 students. Now, we have gone electronic. We now have in place a system that we call ERP, where students can register online. And we do hope that our own students have done the registration, which was 
supposed to have ended by the 29th, in which case, after 29, then you don't meet the 80% requirement. So, all of us are striving for continuous improvement with the purpose of being a world-class university. And indeed, Kibabi University will be a world-class university. We also want to say that uh, uh, in addition to uh, teaching, we also conduct research activities, and we have done that in collaboration uh, with the uh, other stakeholders. Uh, last year, the university was able to carry out two research projects in collaboration with the county government of Obama. The results are nearly ready, and we should be disseminating them anytime. We also, in the research area, work in collaboration with NAPOSTE, the National Council of Science, that really funds the research projects. We are glad to report that a number of our students at both master's level and PhD level have won awards, meaning they have won money, have gotten money to help them to move forward with their research projects. So we are actually moving forward and uh, all of us should be uh, proud of our university. Um, in addition to the linkages that we have locally, we also have international linkages. As we are talking, discussions are going on on how we can partner with universities from as far as China, uh, Japan, um, France, and many other uh, foreign countries. So, we are not only just concentrating on the Bogoma County, we should not be seen from the local context, but we are all over, we are spread world over. In fact, one of the universities in Japan got into the nurse after uh, looking through our website. And that's a critical thing, that for us to be known, we must go the, the computer way. And that's where the, the way things should go, and we look forward to lots of prosperity so that all of us can benefit from this university. Of course, there is also the extension part that we are partnering with. For a university to make an impact in a place, it has to be in touch with the community where it is located. And the university at this moment is running various programs that are meant to integrate the university with the community, to help the community move to the next level, to help the community identify the opportunities, and also to help the, the community uh, to improve their sources of livelihoods. So in one way or another, the university has trained men and women, our neighbors, our hosts, in issues environment. We're looking forward to also training them in issues IT, but we are having a very good relationship, given that our students have rented hostels and they live outside our campuses. So I think in so doing, by so doing, we are accomplishing and leaving the tenets of what the university should be doing. Research, teaching, research, and extension. Right. Please, please, let's set it down, please. My friends at the back, please set it down, please, please, here. Okay, we have already uh, done the prayers, so we want to do the, to the rest. Uh, Mr. Joseph Tumbe has already committed us to the Lord. And uh, since we are already running late, I would like to request the speakers, especially from internal, to stick to time and to be as brief as possible, so that we can meet all. Professor Nechi. The Vice President, Professor Ibar, the Deputy Vice President, the Protocol Observer, the Congress, and the Michael Congress. I salute you all. Good morning. Good morning once again. I want to welcome you to this function about the national cohesion and integration. Uh, basically, to my knowledge, NCIC is all about coming together, 
It's all about the working together of the people in a given nation. It works primarily to fight or rather to get rid of ethnic conflicts. That is the point. And what I'd like to report here is that, Professor, this university has got very uh, funny groups. We have two groups in this university. We are organizing into two tribes. We have the Comrades tribe and we have the Administration tribe. And these two tribes, they live in harmony. We sit together, we talk and we agree. That's why you can see we are growing. The way we are today is not the way we are tomorrow, just because we are living in harmony. That is the integration. Different groups coming together. I don't want to add the comrades that as long as you are still here, let us live as one family. There is a crucial time coming, the time of elections. Let us not think of such whatever there is, such origins that let us go into this one uh, to Bandikao or in plan to Bandikao one. Let us work as one team. Let us put the core values where you came here first. Today I was listening to a narration about Kayamba Africa. Kayamba Africa has got people from different ethnic groups. And Kayamba Africa has been in existence for over 10 years. The reason is because a new guy in Kayamba Africa will always see a guy from Nandi as a brother, will always see a lady from Kikuyu as a sister, and will always see somebody from Luya as a brother. And then they went ahead to say that in Kayamba Africa, somebody from Luya has married somebody from Tukana. Somebody from Kikuyu has married a Luya. Somebody from Mombasa has married somebody from Pokot. So you, you realize they are coming together to work so that they can get rid of this tribal war, this ethnic peace. And I want to urge you that when we grow old, when we think of marrying, let us go to different ethnic groups so that we get rid of these tribal issues. When I marry a Kikuya na Maluya, when I marry a Luwa na Marakwet, when we give birth, my child will go and marry and come. <laughs> yeah, so what, whatever we are trying to think of is building one nation. Yeah. Therefore, I told you that when we grow old, let us embrace that one. Otherwise, I want to hope that this talk, this talk is going to be historic. This talk is going to live a different house, house painted with one face. A face of Kibabi University, a face of the comrades, and they are living with their face. But we shall always bring these two faces together through the leadership that we have. I want to ask the micro comrades that work hard and you graduate to be comrades so that you join us and we work together. Our work is to build Kenya, our work is to build our nation. I'm proud to be. Kenyan, I'm also proud to be a member of Kibabi University. Thank you so much. My name is Makarios Masafa. I'm the chairman of the Student Government Council. I'm the Comrade Zimol in the administration. Uh, professor, allow me to recognize the presence of student leaders. Just wherever they are, they can just wave to Professor Naituni. So that when you look at the apart, we have the brown ones and the black ones. We are one person. Please, student leaders, wherever you are. Thank you very much and God bless you. Big hand for the chairman. Let's 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 minute. What you mean to appreciate? Let's just appreciate. Let's pass it up for me.
to make her remarks, after which she will invite the uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor and Professor Shibayo, and Professor Shibayo will do the lesson for us. Madam Ananda, please. Chairperson of National Cohesion and National Values Committee, Kibabi University College, and the lecturer in the Department of EFA. Uh, sorry, Kibabi University. I think I've been here. to nurture each other so that we can go 
Kudru Ukibabi University as one team. I appreciate the fact that as students we come from different uh, backgrounds. Some of us come from high economic status, some of us don't. But even as we stay together, let us learn to assist each other. Let us learn to come together and help those of us who may not be as lucky as the others. I don't want to say much, but I want to thank you so much for coming, the students from Miami Gulf, please feel at home. And I also want to thank our guests for having taken his time on his busy schedule to come and talk to us. And before I leave, I would like to remember a song that was sung, or, and it's still by Lucky Dube the late. And it says, different colors, one people. And in the same spirit, we can say, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, one people, Kenyans, and one tribe, human beings. Thank you very much. with a lot of honor to welcome our Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Academic Research and Extension, Professor Solomon Shibairo, to take over the program. Karim, please let's welcome him.
Professor Etive Naituki, who is a member of the National Correction and Immigration Commission. Our acting VC, Professor Isaac Aikarope, members of the teaching fraternity, that's the lecturers, the lecturers, uh, colleagues who are non teaching, comrades. Members of the fourth district, um, students and staff from my girls and all who observe, I greet you. Good morning. Uh, today is one of those days when I get uh, happy. The reason being that we are now gathered here to do a very noble activity that universities do. Friends, if you recall, it's just approximately two months ago when uh, His Excellency the President, Uhuru Moigai Kenyatta, who is also the commander of the Kenyan Defense Forces, came here and awarded us each other. What he was essentially telling us that we are now a university. Can you clap for that? In brief, we moved from colleges into university. Now, a university basically exists for a big function that is to create knowledge. And in the hope that this knowledge will go out and transform society. Now, below that, you can define other things, including teaching, training, research, community development, community integration, and so on and so on. So, we have that mandate. And now, in doing it, today we are gathered here to do one angle of it. Where am I? We engage community, students, staff, in pertinent issues that affect the nation. If you are Wabalat, as I am, we are a nation that is still also very young. We gained our independence in 1963. Before then, many years before then, we were living as what people call tribes. If I go back to the 1880s or something like that, and communities were not together. So you have those that you find in the West, those in the East, like the Akamba, the Galata, the Giriyama, and all the other. And most of the time when they would meet, there would be war. They would kill each other, fight over resources, over power, over land. And when the British arrived in this land, and the colonialists, I want to say that they actually exploited their differences. They didn't want us to exist. The reason being, if people manage to become one, they can easily overthrow it. So because they had reasons of having mastership over us, they just wanted to accelerate us. But as it was, the population kept on increasing, and the resources that were there every land became small, and the, the boundaries between the tribes and among the tribes or communities started disappearing. Uh, urban areas started developing, so people would move from the rural areas to go and seek for employment. And you find you mixing an integrated community that you never ever imagined. As time on, went on, there are also intermarriages. So I would say two positive, positive things happen while the negative things also still happen. <laughs> then Kenya came and gave independence. We started experiencing another struggle, what we may call power struggle. 
and different communities started just doing not only for resources, but even for power. And hence, we have had election after election, whereby one of the family is released. Who are the people who Now, that may not have that help for us as a nation. Because of those differences, it has led to differences that we have seen in the past. Clashes among different communities, and even competition for jobs, competition for businesses, and that will not be right. Of recent, we recall what happened in 2007. It was in a nice thing, and our prayer is that we should not go to that. Again, we went and passed through that challenge, and we gave the constitution. We have gone through what we call a two-tier government system, where we have devolution, and now we have counties. Still, there are occasions where we see we are struggling to coexist. In our university setups, these differences have also flared up. Guess of honor, at the moment we are doing one thing that we have been commanded by the government. And it's a hidden pet point. Should we, I mean, how we deal with the issue of tribal or regional organizations. Of course, we have been instructed by the government not to support those kinds of organizations. And yes, they were very strong even here, partly because supported by other parts of the constitution, say freedom of expression. But you know some differences are led into uh, bad results. So we are grappling on how we can transform ourselves from that kind of setup to professionalism. As the president of the student said, we have become a mature community. In our community, he called it that we have two major tribes, those who call the administrators and the students. But we are struggling with the hard work. So, this, the former leaders of the tribal organizations, we are engaging and we still continue to engage. But partly we have agreed they wind up their activities slowly. And even when they do them, they will not be on official calendar of the university. But to be just for their work. We are soon going to have a cultural week. In the past, the tribal differences would be seen. But these other ones we are saying, yes, we are going to have Motokoi from Mukambani. But let a Kalinjin be the one cooking Motokoi. Or Fulu from Luoland. But let it be from there by Amgiriyama. We are also encouraging, just like the students say, different interactions, form relationships, have a kind friend from a different community. Who knows you may marry those people and you come up with a different product. So I want to believe as time goes on, we'll be more coherent and an integrated society. Elections in the past in the university here also have been challenging because they tended to be done on those tribal lines. But as they promised that this year we are going to do things differently, we are going to have differences in terms of ideas. Why are you having a chairman to run what ideas? To help you in what? Not on where you came from or where you are back. That was a natural accident, which was not bad. It was a good one. But not for So we 
without saying so much, I believe we do not have time. I would like to encourage them to continue living together, sisters and sisters, as we are doing. And therefore, I wish you well in that growth, and may God bless you. And now I want to take this opportunity, uh, first of all, to give our confidence of the other members of staff. There are still many other activities that are going on uh, within the university, but as far as they finish, they come in. Uh, that's why you are saying we are meeting here, but you'll be full in a minute. So, uh, please be patient with them. Now, high table, we have introduced each other. If you just came in a second ago, Or a few 
20 seconds. But may I say something? From time immemorial, a university was a place where people from diverse backgrounds met for the simple task of creating knowledge and seeking the truth. And all of us are here for that purpose. You all came here to create knowledge and to seek the truth. You look at the program you go through and the curriculum you go through. That is the purpose. If you don't think that is what brought you here, then you are wrong. And that is why a public lecture like this one is a very important component of the university almanac. And a university that doesn't have a public lecture has no business calling itself a university. Because this is where we get the opportunity to exchange ideas. Today, the university's function is more than just that. It is also to provide solutions to problems and challenges that face society in order to make the world a better place to live in. But I want to remind you that today, Kenya is not that better place that we want to live in. And if I ask you now to list some of the problems that have been bedeviling this country, I'll be short of space to list them because they are numerous. But let us give ourselves a test. I'll start with you, madam. Just name one problem that we are facing as a country in Kenya that needs a solution. Just one. Listen to that lady, please. Unemployment. Students from my age, girls, you can also give. You have them. Unemployment is one of them, yes? Sorry? Insecurity? Anybody else? Yes? Corruption. Great. It's corruption. Now, let me, let me give the rest. There is uh, unemployment, insecurity. Corruption with a capital C. And then, there is impunity, ethnicity. I think those are some of them. There are many. Now, let me just go back to impunity. Recently, I'll finish in a moment. I think about two or three days ago, a Kenyan was driving his, in his very expensive car. It is called a Range Rover. And a good Range Rover goes for about 18, 18 million shillings. Then this fellow crashes into a gate and kills one worker and leaves two others injured. But when he came out of his car, his biggest concern was not the dead watchman. That was damaged. And you know, you would expect that as we are talking, that Kenyan is behind us. But you are wrong. That Kenyan went and slept in his house. While the poor watchman slept in the mochan, in the cold mall. That is Kenya. I don't know whether you want to live in a world like that. On Tuesday, I was reading the obituary. I like reading the obituary. Names of, you know, the dead. Not just about the dead. I just think the, the 
and nervous. For me, there's one reason why I do that. As a creative writer, sometimes it's very difficult to get nervous. But sometimes you read those obituary and you come across interesting names. And you can use them to give your characters without anybody taking you to court because they are gone. <laughs> so this particular notice was about a family I know. It's called the Mangane family. One of them had died. And you know, I will go down the list. That person had 18 brothers and sisters from one mother. You know, one mother gave birth to 18 children. But that's not the highest record. The highest registered number is 19 from Vihiga. One mother, 19 children. But what interested me is that the names of in-laws read like the Kenyan society. You found somebody married to Otieno. This is a Bukusu family. But some are married to Otieno, some are married to Mutua, others are married to Wanzala from Taita Tabeta, others are married to Indians, others are in California, and the names do not look like, read like Africa. But the problem with Kenyans is that that is where our unity stops. Immediately after burial, we go back to our bad manners tribalism, ethnicity. Because in every family in Kenya today, there's someone who is married to another one from a different community. But why do we still talk about our region, our university, our this? Why? I think that's the disease that we must deal with. My son is married to a Kamba. They have a boy who is about three months old. And I don't know where that boy, the blood, where the blood comes from. Is it from Teso or from? Now, if as a family we start talking about this, this Musioka, what is his other name? The politician, the former big We must deal with this Kalonzo Musioka because he is from a wrong tribe. We don't, how do I say that? And my daughter-in-law comes from in fact, she comes from Tutui, very close to Kalonzo Musioka's home. I want to tell you today, students, if you have a boyfriend who has never taken you to his home, forget about him today. <laughs>
sounds familiar. The clubs are bigger. Is that the kind of country, country we want? No. This is what we are going to share. And ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you. But Kenyans again, that's their bad manners. A Kenyan must be told something before they do it. Even something as simple as and natural as clapping. A Kenyan must be told, can we clap now? And then they clap. Why can't you just come naturally? So I wish to invite Professor Nigeria to speak to us. So 
that we begin to work and think together without these artificial boundaries that we have created and I have to say it for the last 50 years. And those activities and artificial boundaries have been created by the type of leaders we have been having that have created those artificial boundaries. At independence, we are very innocent lot. And we are also very few. You know we are six million. People don't know that because now we are moved for the something. At independence we are six million. We could not be molded into a physical entity that loves and thinks of one another and thinks of our legacy that we bear to live. But not transient that we are now used to. Because, you know, let me make it clear that all of us, we are spoiled children. You know what the psychologists say? They say, if you are parents, okay, if you are parents who are abused by their parents, there is an internal party. And the ones you deny them the time because they have no other ideas, and then the leaders will emerge. Because right now, the leaders cannot emerge because we are sitting on them using the tribe. Leaders want to change things. Okay? Now we have to 